Good morning, Reverter. My name is Peter Nguyen. I'm one of the team leaders for the front end. Uh, my team consists of Andrew, Gia, and Ryan here. My team was responsible for the registration and uh, user login stories. Before we can continue the PowerPoint, uh, let's talk a little bit about our application. The title is Ride Share. The purpose of the application itself is to connect Reverter Associates during the training to other associates to organize carpools and to, uh, carpools to work. I will uh, 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 introduce my other team leader here. My name is Jason and I was working on the, uh, my team was working on the website's functionality. The team consists of Carl and George. All right, um, hey, hello, my name is Anais Cabrera and I was a team lead for the back end of this project. Um, alongside my team members, Kwame and Robert, we were able to create a well-tested and well-documented backend. Good afternoon, guys. My name is Ryan Karstens, and this is just a brief overview of the technologies we utilize to leverage the Scrum methodology. They include Asana, which is just a um, organizational platform that we utilize for our user stories and managing all of our tasks. We also leverage Slack, which, which is just a messaging platform so that we could keep uh, up, keep up with continuous um, development, and then we also utilize Git, which is just for version control. This is a snapshot that we have of our Asana dashboard. As you can see, we have a few different categories from to-do lists, as well as in progress, done and merged into dev. Throughout our sprints, we were out, we were um, progressively moving all of our tasks to the right of the dashboard and uh, officially completed them all by, by the end of our, uh, by the end of our development. Hello, my name is Kwame, and I assisted the back end by helping create the pipeline. And these are just a few of the, um, the technologies we use. We have the AWS EC2, which basically um, was a web service that provided us with a secure, resizable um, capacity in the cloud for us to um, host the projects. We have Maven. Maven is just a um, uh, build automation tool for Java to help us uh, build our projects. We have Jenkins as well. Jenkins is a continuous integration tool for well, application that helps us build, test, and deploy uh, continuously. And we have Circle CI, which helps automate the build and test and deploy um, processes. Um, configuring the backend pipeline, basically after creating the AWS EC2, connected it through um, Git Bash, um, installed the technologies previously mentioned, and configure them accordingly and then deploy Jenkins. All right, so in order to create the backend, we, we used technologies like Maven, Java, Spring Boot, Spring Data, and Postgres for our database. For the next few slides, we'll be showing um, some code snippets of how, of the different layers in our backend. For this slide, we have a code snippet of one of our beans. Um, these, this bean uses hybrid annotations in order to map our objects to our relational database. By using these annotations, we follow a code-first approach where we simultaneously create our objects and our tables. For the next slide, we have our controllers where um, we use Spring MVC annotations like REST controller, um, get mapping, cross origin, and request mapping, which um, let our, our controllers handle requests and call the appropriate services. Now for our services, um, they're the ones that call our the appropriate um, repository methods. But in this case, our repositories are extending the JPK repository found in Spring Data. Um, these come with built-in query methods that we're able to use. All right, hi, my name's Robert Bucci. These are the technologies that we use and leverage in order to uh, test and document our backend. For testing purposes, we incorporated JUnit, uh, Spring Web MVC test, and Makito. For documentation, specifically API documentation, we use Swagger. Uh, for overall documentation, we use JavaDoc. Uh, for code coverage, we use Jococo. And then for code analysis, we ended up using a Sonar Cloud. So this is a snapshot of some of the code that we use for testing purposes. Uh, annotation driven testing as I like to call it. Um, so we incorporated the WebMVC test to test our, to mock our back, our endpoints, our APIs. 
Um, we used some Aikido as well, just to make sure that we were getting a desired output. And we incorporated a little J unit as well. Uh, this is a snapshot of the backend Sonar Cloud overview. As you can see, we have zero vulnerabilities, zero debt, 100% coverage, and 1.2% uh, duplications, and zero code smells. Um, that's not to say that everything was tested. We just decided to test the most important things, like the controllers and the services. So out of the things that we did, when go ahead and test, we had zero vulnerabilities, zero debt, 100% coverage, and zero code smells. Hello, my name is Peter again. I'm here to talk about the technologies that we leverage with our front-end application. For course, we use Angular 8, which is the newest one right now. Uh, and then we uh, leverage the Bootstrap library, um, for the framework I mean to do the styling. We do have an NPM manager as, as well to manage our uh, packages and mo mo modules. And we were using TypeScript and our IDE of choice was our VS Code. Now the technologies we utilize to create our pipeline in the front end included GitHub. We also incorporated Circle CI for build automation and, de and deployment. And then lastly, we also in incorporated AWS S3 Bucket uh, to deploy our application. Um, and this is just an example of how we set up our uh, Circle CI. So we first went um, onto Circle CI and created a project through the Reventer Labs. Once we had accomplished that, we would then create a uh, configuration file within our, our repository. We would add in the proper uh, commands um, in order for it to build and automate uh, like we wanted it to. And then finally, after all that was taken care of and we would uh, officially build our application, uh, we would take in, we would put in the uh, files from, um, from Angular into the uh, S3 bucket and at which point it would build and then give us our endpoint. Once we hit on the endpoint, uh, it would actually display our application on the web browser. This is just a snapshot of one of our pull requests that we had made. As you can see, uh, Peter created a pull request uh, for a specific uh, commit. And in order, and just the workflow of how that works is uh, we have two developers, and in this case it was myself and Adonis, who reviewed the, uh, the uh, commit, made sure everything was working properly, if there was anything unusual that we needed to review. And then uh, once we found that it was appropriate to uh, approve it, we did, and at which point it officially merged into our development branch. And over here is just an example of what our Circle CI build and deployment application, uh, build and deployment looks like. As you can see on the left hand side, we had a lot of successes. So obviously if things are working properly, they will build and deploy automatically for us. However, uh, there are certain, uh, certain situations where a build or a deployment would fail for whatever reason. We were able to overcome that and as you can see, everything's working like it should be. And then last but not least, after we had officially launched um, our application via the S3 bucket, it would take us to our application's homepage, as you can see right here. Hello, my name is Andrew, and for this iter we were the first batch to work on this iteration of Rideshare, so we had to build it from the ground up, which included creating the models and services. Some of the models we used were admin, user, car, and batches, and these help build up the framework in order to build up the services which provide functionality. And these services included uh, car service, user service, batch service, even stuff like a logger service. Uh, here is an example of the user model. It, it's constructed this way to match the user on the back end. And this is an example of the user service. Some of the user services that you could have used were, was to update user information, change, <coughs> whether or not the driver is accepting riders, and you would be able to get riders for a certain location. Okay. My name is Jason, and I was working on the admin functionality. Uh, one of the user stories was about uh, that the admin was able to ban or unban the user, which means that if the user was banned, they will be unable to get into the system, and they will be prompted that they were banned. Uh, the second functionality I also incorporated was the admin filtering, which the filters the users. So let's say we have like over 100 users, uh, the admin can filter through them out and then ban whichever user. And then the third incorporation I put into the uh, to our web application was protecting the admin portal. So for example, if the user happened to know the admin URL, um, it will be it will redirect them 
because they don't have, don't have admin access. Hi, I'm Carl. So in contrast to the admin um, uh, users, a regular user would be able to log on to, to the application and um, see a list of all available drivers and their contact information. And this is handled by a service that makes a database call um, to retrieve all um, registered users and display only those that are um, uh, flagged as drivers. And as a final note, um, uh, I also created a uh, logging service. So this lets us not only um, well, this lets us not only um, display uh, uh, informational messages on the console, but also lets us store these messages into a log file for user reference. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Zhao. So uh, there are three types of registration in our app: one for riders, one for drivers, and one for car. So the the registration Registration for riders and cars uh, and drivers are similar. So the difference between the riders and driver is the rider doesn't have a car. I also create a validation service to check the user input using JavaScript and the regular expression. The routing is set up for a different for each Angular component, uh, such as driver home and rider home. So this is the page of user registration. <coughs> All the fields are required, and the user are not allowed to sign up until they fill out all the information and all the input are validated. They can choose to uh, sign up as driver and sign up as rider. So if the user choose to sign up as driver, it will redirect to the car registration page Again, all the uh, fields are required. So the maximum uh, car age is 15 years. The user can choose to can cancel the car registration if they don't have a uh, appropriate car. And if they cancel it, they will just become a writer. Hello, my name is George. And uh, my feature I've been working on is a uh, driver page. Um, the view pulls out the driver's data from the database and also it uh, filters uh, the riders uh, for the particular location. Also, the driver uh, can change uh, the status uh, to inactive if, for example, there's no more places in the car. Uh, during the development, uh, I encountered uh, a lot of challenges. One of them is uh, failing a circle CI test uh, while uh, the application uh, was working perfectly in the browser without any errors. And with the help, uh, help of my teammates, we figured out that we just needed to add a variable for the existing uh, instance, but with a different type of an object instead of an array. And after that, uh, the test was passed. Now, some might say that you're not a true developer unless you incorporate testing, and I think our batch try to emphasize that as much as possible. And we did so on the front end by leveraging the Jasmine and Karma applications. They're already integrated into Angular for us. And then we also leveraged Sonar Cloud for the front end as well to just validate and check and see if everything was working properly, there were any code smells or bugs, etc. Uh, this is just an example of our code coverage. Um, as you can see, we have um, different levels of coverage. We have statements, branches, functions um, that are covered with, within Jasmine Karma. And as of now, we had about 42% coverage. We also utilize the Jasmine Karma test runner, and uh, it actually will display all of our spec files that we did test. As you can see, we have about 30 specs that we tested with zero failures, uh, and it just involves a lot of playing around. So um, over time, as more branches are merged in, um, these specs can, can be manipulated between failure to success. So we were able to get all of that taken care of seamlessly. 
And then this is just a snapshot of our Sonar Cloud overview. As you can see, we had zero vulnerabilities, and we only had about 23 minutes of overall debt, and we didn't have very high duplication as well. It's only about 1.2%. Let's talk about documentation. So because this is our first iteration, knowing that there's gonna be multiple iterations to come, we want to establish a, a good documentation where other Revature associates can look into and follow so they could pick up where we left to improve it. So in order to provide a good documentation, uh, we leverage ConfluDoc, which is a documentation generator for the Angular uh, front end. Um, it was easy to set up, you just, it's part of NPM, so you can install it and it will be handled through that NPM man, uh, manager itself, itself. And by running a script, it will generate a documentation folder for all the, the, doc, the document, uh, for the notations that you just enter in. Here's an um, example of like the documentation coverage in that folder. As you can see, we have about 73%, which is really good. Um, Comperdoc also, how Comperdoc does this by, is by, it utilizes uh, JS docs and annotations too. So whenever you put an annotation uh, with the JS docs, it would know that it will be a document and it will be um, uh, applied. The other thing about the, the documentation is we incorporate it with the CI CD pipeline as well. So whenever um, there's new updates or new changes to the repo, there will be a live documentation set up on the S3 bucket. Here's an example of like the annotation that we, are, that we were discussing. For example, there's an app param here. So if you have anything that, that, does, uh, that takes a parameter, you could just put app param and it will know that it will be, it will be documented for like the uh, comfort app. And let's uh, do the demo, shall we? Yes, let's. <laughs> So when we click on this website, we go to our homepage, we can sign in, we can select an account, we can either use the drop down menu or we can type in the name. So we want Charles. And then we type in the username, chmod777. Currently, this is a driver, it's a writer. Uh, let's go to my car. Uh, let's remove this car. Now this user is a rider. Let's go back to home. These are all the drivers that are available. So pretend you like the name Lewis over Aereo. So you can search by Lewis. Here's Lewis, here's his phone number. You can call him at 123-456-7890. You can also filter by location. Uh, say you wanna do Reviture HQ, I rest it and you can see all the available drivers here. You can also sort by car year. So for example, we would go back to CUNY, SPS, and we can sort by car year. If you prefer newer models over older models, there you go. Uh, now we can go to Charles' profile. We can edit anything we want. For example, his phone number changed. It's now 9999. Let's update that. And it's hit the back end. Uh, let's go to his current preferences. Because he's a rider, he can't take, uh, he can't take uh, other riders with him because he doesn't have a car. But we can add a car by clicking my car. And we can say add a car. Uh, he has a Chrome four seater Ford. Mustang, obviously 2020, because we only provide the best for Reviture employees in the rideshare program. And now he is a driver, and his, uh, now we, if we go to home, it's completely different than before, because now he has available seats, he can see other riders, instead of seeing drivers. Now we can log out, and we can sign up. Uh, We'll sign up as Jason, one of our team leaders. 